What's up? This is Mario and welcome to Awesome Audio. In this video, we will talk about spectral analysis. In the previous episode, we learned that any sound may be imitated with a sum of sine waves, and we saw a few examples. Spectral analysis consists in analyzing a wave not in terms of its waveform, but in terms of the sine waves you would need to sum to create that wave. This group of sine waves, which is particular for each specific waveform, is what we call its frequency spectrum. When we talk about spectral analysis, it's common to use the word frequencies to refer to each sine wave that exists in a frequency spectrum. The spectrum of a wave is obtained through this equation, called the Fourier transform. Doing the calculation by hand is an incredibly extensive procedure, but fortunately, we count with the help of computers. Using a version of the equation optimized for computers, called the fast transform, the calculation can be done in a fraction of a second. Audio and music software are usually capable of obtaining a spectrum. In Audacity, you may find it under Analyze, Plot Spectrum, and for VST-compatible software, you can add a plugin such as the Voxango Span. For example, if through the Fourier transform we obtain the frequency spectrum of a 440 Hz sine wave, we are only going to observe a single frequency, since in order to make a sine wave we only need, well, one sine wave. The frequency and amplitude in the spectrum are the same as those of the wave. But, if we get the spectrum of a square wave, we will observe all of these frequencies and their corresponding amplitudes, which are the same we used in the additive synthesis example in the previous episode. This is how the spectrums look when obtained in Audacity. The components do not look like perfectly straight lines, but as peaks that stand out. This is because of the software's limited precision, and it is a common occurrence. The straight lines correspond only to the ideal, mathematically perfect case. Additionally, the proportion between the amplitude of the components looks different than how we saw it before. But that's because in this case, their values are not being graphed as amplitudes, but in decibels instead. In the spectrum of a periodic sound, the wave with the lowest frequency is called the fundamental, and the rest, if they are multiples of the fundamental, are called harmonics. The fundamental is the frequency of the wave as a whole, and determines the musical note we hear, while harmonics are what give the tone a specific timbre, and also give the wave its specific shape. If we again take the example of the 440 Hz square wave going through a speaker that cannot reproduce frequencies higher than 1400 Hz, this would be the spectrum of the wave that comes out of the speaker. The timbre of a sound, its waveform, and its harmonics are all directly related. While sounds in which we perceive a predominant musical note have harmonic components, noisy sounds have many components that aren't multiples of a fundamental, that is, they're inharmonic. Actually, you can rarely even say they have a fundamental at all. But, by observing these components, we can explain why sometimes we can perceive specific musical notes in the sound of non-tonal percussions like a cymbal, or why when we play a specific musical note in an instrument, sometimes we can distinguish a musical note different than the one we're actually playing. It's important to remember that the frequency spectrum is only an alternative interpretation of the wave, and it doesn't mean that we literally had to sum all of those sine waves to form it. For example, to electrically generate a square wave, we wouldn't need to add the output of a great amount of sine wave generators with different frequencies and amplitudes, but rather, we could just vary the voltage between 1 volt and minus 1 volt, for example, and thus, we successfully generate a square wave. But, spectral analysis is useful because it allows us to more easily predict the effect that acoustic, electric, and digital filters have on their respective waves, and it even helps us understand human hearing, as we will see in the next episode. We should keep in mind that when the Fourier transform is applied to a portion of a wave, we get the spectrum as if that portion repeated infinitely. For example, if we obtain the frequency spectrum of the selected portion of this wave, with it we form a perfect infinite sine wave. This is what the Fourier transform sees, and we obtain its frequency spectrum which would be that of a pure sine wave. But, if we define this portion so that the sine wave gets cut off, the frequency we will get is actually that of a wave like this, which would sound this way. And considering that the pitch and timbre of a wave are linked to its frequency spectrum, then its spectrum will be different and not that which we expected for a sine wave. This spectrum would represent the perfectly sinusoidal and infinite waves we would need to add together to make this wave, which would appear only slightly different than a perfect sine wave. A frequency spectrum and a spectrogram are slightly different, the frequency spectrum allows us to see the frequencies in a single instant of time, with the frequencies in the horizontal axis and the magnitude in the vertical axis. While the spectrogram allows us to see a spectrum that changes with time, having the time in the horizontal axis, the frequency in the vertical axis, 
and the magnitudes represented with colors. Here, we can see how MP3 compression removes frequencies higher than 16 kHz in some sections. In music, the spectral content changes with time, since musical notes, instruments, and their amplitudes vary in different moments. So, in order to visualize it in terms of its frequencies, we would need to use a spectrogram, which allows us to see the variation in time in a single graph, or repeatedly obtain the frequency spectrum of small portions of audio, one by one, many times in the lapse of a single second. This last thing is what music software do to visualize sound as bars, where each bar extends to a certain range of frequencies. This is why it appears to be animated. Each individual moment is simply a frequency spectrum of a small portion of audio. With that, we conclude this episode. In the next one, we'll talk about the structure of the human ear and how it works. If you enjoyed this episode, you may hit like, leave a comment, and share to those interested. For more content like this, you may also subscribe. See you in the next video.